is that uh, yeah is that working now you can uh, give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down hopefully oh there it is thank you for the thumbs up yeah there you go okay all this technology that everybody had to get good at for COVID here my goodness anyway I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to leave you here this this morning for just a few seconds as we prepare our hearts for worship before we begin thanks for being with us on this Trinity Sunday. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Together, glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace, by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, and the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson is from the Hebrew Scriptures and the first book of Torah, called Genesis. Here we learn about how God, the Holy Spirit, played a role in creation. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, 
Let there be lights in the dawn of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be signs and court seasons for the days and the years. Let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every living thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created us, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree that seed in its fruit. You shall have them for good food, and every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all were multiplied. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. May your word live in us. And bear much fruit to your glory. Let us pray the psalm together, Psalm 8. We will pray it responsively, pausing at the asterisk. O Lord, our governor, how I guess I didn't give instructions very well. <laughs> I'll read up to the asterisk, you read the rest, then I'll read the asterisk line. O oh Lord, our governor, out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, what is man that you should be mindful of him? You have made him little lower than the angels. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. 
all sheep and oxen, even the, of the, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. And O Lord, our governor. Our second lesson is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, a small church in modern day Greece to whom he encourages to live in peace and love. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell, put things in order. Listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. May your word live in us. And bear much fruit to your glory. When the air conditioning went out on the car last week and the mechanics spent many hours trying to figure out what had happened, yanking out parts that weren't working, he asked me if I wanted to come back into the workshop and take a look at these broken parts. Well, these parts were the front and rear evaporators of the air conditioning units. Now, I'm sure that all of you know exactly what those are, but I had no idea, which is why I took him up on that offer. I was curious. And so I went back and I took a look at these parts, which I could see were worn and needed to be replaced. While I didn't fully understand exactly what the mechanic did, I did understand enough of it not to be surprised that when the repair was completed and I pushed my air conditioning button, cold air came out. And I thank God after a week of 90 degree temperatures. <laughs> Like cars, I also have an interest in God. Here at church, we ask God questions about who God is, what God is doing in the world, and what's expected of you and me as followers of Jesus. And today, Trinity Sunday, you and I honor that introspection into the nature and the composition of the deity, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, as we'll sing at the 10 o'clock service. If you're like me, uh, you fully understand God the way I understand modern automotive air air conditioning technology. Yes, I'm interested in it, and I can comprehend a bit of it, but most of it is way over my head. And that's okay, because I don't have to fully understand it to reap its benefits. Same with God, same with the Trinity. Let's investigate it, but let's not forget why God is here and what that means to you and me today. This Trinitarian God is the eternal God Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. What does that mean? Well, here's what it means, and here's the point of the sermon, folks. God forgives you for yesterday, is with you today, and is working for your tomorrow. God forgives us for yesterday, God is with us today, and God is working for us tomorrow. 
God forgives us for yesterday. God is with us today to accept, to protect, and to provide. And God is working for us tomorrow to guide and prepare. On Trinity Sunday, I often quote you a sign that was found in an ancient abbey in England. An abbey, of course, was a place where monks lived and were built not solely as backdrops for modern British television series. And so the sign which was posted at the entrance to the church in that specific abbey, it read this. Inside the abbey is where monks gathered every Sunday for Eucharist and a sermon, except for Trinity Sunday, owing to the difficulty of the subject matter. Very often, rectors of churches are known to assign today's preaching task to their associates, to bring in a guest preacher or to find some other way to get out of it. Perhaps it's because they think they need uh, to attempt to explain the unexplainable or to delve into the unexplainable nature and essence of God. Now, I'm sure all of you are salivating at the prospect of such an endeavor this morning, and I hope I don't disappoint you by going in another direction. Because what strikes me about this day is that the Trinity is really about God's eternal presence with you and me. Remember, I am with you to the end of the age. God forgives us for yesterday, is with us today, and is working for our tomorrow. I got an email from this uh, this week from a woman who was ashamed of the loose morals that she had in her youth. She had written asking for advice on how to get over her guilt and shame, even though it had happened more than 30 years ago. I was young, she said. I was 20 years old, and I didn't know what I was doing. She said she'd been to therapy and could not shake the feeling that God was not pleased with her, that God had abandoned her, that God was punishing her. So she felt alone and she felt unloved. She felt like she was on the outside of God's favor, which is why she emailed me. Maybe you felt this way. Maybe you got that feeling this morning. So I wrote her back and I reminded her that faith is not a feeling. Abraham was not made righteous because he felt that way. Mother Teresa, as recounted in her autobiography, released several years after she had died, recounted years of her feeling distant from God, all the while she was doing amazing work from the Lord, for the Lord. No, we are not loved because we feel loved. God's love transcends and surpasses all feelings. We like to tell the story of my friend who invited um, a friend of his over for dinner, and his little kid was probably that size, and said, uh, Dad, who's coming for dinner? And he said, oh, it's my friend so-and-so. So, -and -so. Well, well, who is he? And he said, oh, he's very prominent. He's a millionaire. And so the kid was very excited. A little while later, the doorbell rang. The kid ran to the door, opened up the door, and, and there was his friend, but he had on ripped jeans and, and then a T-shirt. And the little kid said, are you so-and-so? He said, yeah. He goes, well, you don't look like a millionaire. <laughs> to which the guy said, I don't have to look like a millionaire. I am a millionaire. We don't have to feel forgiven or look like forgiven or forgiven to be forgiven. We don't have to feel loved in order to be loved. Now, if you're like me, you can agree with God's forgiveness with your mind, but convincing your heart is a different matter. And the sticky thoughts of yesterday's decisions have a way of nagging and nagging and nagging us open. And we all rely on God's help in the ongoing work of self-forgiveness and regret, don't we? There are just some things we never get over, some mistakes that are so tragic that they linger on. But with God's help, maybe it can't be fully healed, but you can get through it. With God at our side, God provides what we need. God forgives us for yesterday, is with us today, and is working for our tomorrow. What has God done for you today? It's a question that we're going to be asking this summer. We're going to be asking you. We're starting a new Sunday tradition on Sunday mornings. We're going to start at the 10 o'clock called the Weekly Witness. And it's aimed to help us edify one another in Christ. I'd love to do the Weekly Witness here at the 8 o'clock also. The question is, did God do something good for you this week? We'll ask for a three-minute testimony. And again, if you want to sign up, contact me if you have a story. 
and meanwhile I'll go first. I was driving home the other day when a woman on a cell phone pulled out a Kroger's and she decided to pull out way in front of me way too quickly, causing me to slam, the brakes, slam on the brakes. And then she proceeded to use both lanes, seemingly oblivious to the fact that there were other drivers around here at rush hour on a Wednesday afternoon. And as I was mulling over her behavior that had inconvenienced me and probably irritated many others, it occurred to me how thankful I was of the 99% of the other drivers who were doing a great job. Sure, there's always the 1%, and frankly, they command too much of my attention. But I had a God moment, and God reminded me that I need to be more thankful for the 99% who are doing just a great job. Nobody else was pulling out in front of me. Nobody was getting in my way. They were, for the most part, driving really, really well. And how often I forget that. Why does God always want us to look for thankfulness in the ups and downs of our days? Why do the Psalms, the most read book in the Bible, have so many verses and chapters devoted to giving thanks? From ancient Israel to St. Paul, the Bible is replete with encouragements for you and for me to rejoice in all things. Not to rejoice for all things, that's a crucial distinction, but to rejoice in all things. It's because thankfulness and gratitude are good for us. We know that, especially compared to grumpiness and vengeance, of which there is way too much in the world already. So I thank God for that cell phone driver's message to me. To th I thank, to thank God for 99% instead of 1%, which reminds me that I can be joyful in all things. She reminded me of God's ever presence. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. God forgives us for yesterday. God is with us today. And God is working for our tomorrow. My 30-year-old friends just moved into a new house. It's a nice neighborhood, walking distance to groceries and places to eat. It's a ranch-style home. And I walked through and I asked them, why did you choose this, this home? And they said, well, it's a good school district for the kids. And it's got a lot of room for them to play. And I said, why did you choose a ranch? And they said, well, we want to grow old here. We want this to be our forever home. Preparing for those older years when we're younger, thinking about our future, preparing for what it holds, is not just what this wise couple does. It's what God does. In today's gospel, we hear Jesus admonishing us to go forth and make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Trinity. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. How would you approach today if you were confident that God was going to meet your needs tomorrow? How would you live your life if you knew that all the things you would face tomorrow would never separate you from God's love and God's provision for you? How big would be your sigh of relief? Would be the decline in your blood pressure and would be the smile on your face to truly know that God's got this. Your future is blessed and watched over and that we are destined nowhere outside of God's hands. Friends, Trinity Sunday is not just the first Sunday of Pentecost, but the first Sunday of summer for many of us as we turn the corner on a new season of the year, a new season even in our lives. So what does it look like for us to make this season one in which we turn more purposefully, more intentionally toward God, drawing nearer, handing over our worries and anxieties in a more consistent basis, seeking to live in deeper places of generosity and kindness and dedication to Jesus and Jesus' mission. Our Trinitarian God forgives us for yesterday, is with us today, is working for our tomorrow. May this be our promise and our challenge for this new season, as you and I walk in praise and joy for the one who promises, and lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Amen. Yeah. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy Trinity, you equip your people with wisdom and compassion. Reveal yourself to us anew today, encouraging and energizing your church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Chris, Steve, and all lay and ordained ministers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Holy Trinity, as St. Paul instructed the church to walk in love and peace, help our elected leaders lead with compassion and wisdom, especially President Joe Biden, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, our representatives and senators in Ken Cyber, Mayor of Southfield. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy One in Three, be with those who suffer this morning, especially our neighbors in Haiti, Ukraine, Sudan, and Israel. We pray for Episcopal parishes in Brooklyn and Madison Heights. Send your healing and peace and give us direction in the ways we can help. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Holy Trinity, as you ascended into heaven with power, giving your disciples instruction, give our parish direction in carrying out the outreach activities we undertake with our anti-poverty and gun safety initiatives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we bind okay. ourselves, O oh Lord, to you, knowing that you are bound to all who are disheartened, discouraged, suffering, and sick. We now pray for all who are ill this morning and need your touch. Whom have you put upon our hearts? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, is this hymn the saints now sing. We pray for those who've gone before us. Let us pray for our saints, for those who have died. Feel free to name them silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy Trinity, thank you for dwelling among us to strengthen, guide, and protect us in this Pentecost season. Help us know you more deeply and let us follow you more nearly. Give us all a fresh start and all who long for the freedom of your forgiveness, freedom from that forgiveness. Give your mercy to us who are weary and look for a place to rest in your presence. Renew us as heaven and earth meet that we might may find our true life in you and with you, even now, even here. Amen. And may the Amen. Lord be always with you. You may now share a sign of that peace with each other. Peace be with you, battle bone. You may be seated. Just a couple of announcements this morning. I will remind you of as I uh, get the table set here. Um, as you probably noticed when you pulled up, we are getting set for a picnic out there. And so we're, uh, we're thankful to be able to, uh, uh, to open up our lawn, which uh, we started in COVID. And it seems to have caught on to a degree. And what we do is we will do the first Sundays in June, July, August, and September outside. This is our parish picnic today, so we are providing some food. If you're hungry, you want to come back, by all means do it. We got a new grill 
and they were so excited. I got a call from Senior Word yesterday. It works, so we're excited. <laughs> Unlike the last time, right? Um, when we discovered it didn't work. So that's happening. And then, uh, as I'm, as you may have heard, we're having a peace march on September 17th. What that means is at noon to one, we will be debuting a very interesting outdoor installation to help us be mindful of. Um, I think whenever we hear of a gun tragedy here in, in uh, certainly in Michigan, uh, where it hits home, but also across the country, our hearts really grieve, and we wonder what can we do, and so we pray and we lift up these matters, and we also try to become a little bit more educated. So our installation this time around is going to be something that uh, educates us on um, on, on this issue. So I invite you to come. We'll have several of our county commissioners, our mayor, our police chief uh, here on back lawn from noon to one on the 17th. And then we're going to do a walk um, up to 12 miles and back, a, a march inviting people to help make this a more peaceful world. So I commend that to you and invite you to join, uh, join us for that. The rest of your uh, announcements are in your bulletin. Um, and this is also the time for the offertory. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering the sacrifice to God. Thanks, come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own, have we given thee. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we approach the table. Uh, Lord, this is the table that you gave us before you died uh, for, uh, for our sins. And we ask, O Lord, that you would enlighten us and renew us on this Trinity Sunday with the power of your Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Threefold and glorious God, in fatherly joy you created all things through the grace of your word and the wisdom of your spirit. In the depth of your love for the world, you gave your only Son, that all might come to new life in your spirit. You rolled away the stone by your fatherly hand, and in the power of your spirit, you raised your incarnate Son from the dead. In your fatherly mercy, you breathed your spirit on all the fearful disciples, giving them the fire of your love to live as the body of your Son. And so, adoring you with apostles and prophets, with martyrs and saints, with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all your glorious company in bright array, we celebrate the glory of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, there is none beside you. You are perfect in power, in love, in purity. You invite us to join you at your heavenly banquet that knows no end. In this meal, we recall the sacrifice of your Son and the sanctification of your Spirit. By the power of that same Spirit, 
Take the fragile flesh of your church and transform it into the resurrected glory of your church. Send that Holy Spirit upon each one of us now that we may be made ready to be your companions. And these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks. He blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Trying God in advance of your love, we see your nature as a true relationship. As in Christ you proclaim your word to the spirits in prison, make yourself known to all who find themselves incarcerated in body, mind, or spirit. Be close to all who struggle in relationship at home, in the workplace, across the social divides and national thresholds. As your three persons gaze in shared attention, look upon those whose lives go unrecognized. As your three members work together in true partisanship, uphold any who face the struggles of their life alone. As your partners in threefold unity relish one another in deep delight, revitalize those who live without joy or hope. Make your church a community across time and space that enjoys the gift of your life and imitates the wonder of your love. Until all come into your presence and gaze upon your glory, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. As Christ our Savior has taught us, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance of Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
Together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, God forgives you for yesterday, is with you today, and is preparing for tomorrow. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. And may the triune God look upon you and take delight in you. May Christ Jesus be with you always to the end of the age. And may the Holy Spirit lead you into the dance of love that is life in the Trinity. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 